global happenings today. We communicate. We analyze global news. Stay tuned. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to Global Happenings Today YouTube channel. After the issue of final written address, adoption of all their written addresses, many Nigerians are looking forward to the verdict. But most Nigerians believe that at the long run, eventually, it will get to the Supreme Court. But the timing is what matters. The verdict is what Nigerians are looking out for. But meanwhile, Labour Party chieftains are actually calling for calm. Lots of things are going on right now within the Nigerian youth and those advocating for Peter Obi's uh, reclaiming, quote-unquote, his mandate. And they have also called for calm and they're asking obedient nationwide to do this immediately as all eyes seem to be on the judiciary. Well, it's two into one, but before we go into the news proper, we'd like you to subscribe to our channel by clicking on the red subscribe button beside it. You see a bell notification icon. Please go ahead, click on it to get notified as soon as you update our channel on uh, YouTube. But they are ahead of the ruling by the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal (PEPT). The Labour Party senatorial candidate for Edo Central in the February general election, Engineer Osereme Christian Omofoma, on some few hours ago, urged for calm. He made this call while addressing newsmen at the Court of Appeal in Abuja, the venue of the presidential election petition court. The Labour Party chieftain underscored the need for obedience to ensure calmness while the country awaits the court verdict. Now, Engineer Osereme made the remark on some few hours ago in Abuja and uh, recalled that the presidential candidate of the Labour Party during the election, Peter Obi, is currently challenging INEC declaration of the APC candidate, Bola Metunub, as the winner of uh, the polls. Obi is also contesting the constitutionality of the candidacy of APC presidential and vice presidential con contestant. The tribunal is expected to deliver a ruling on the presidential election petition case following the adoption of a final address from all parties in the coming days. Now, here is what they told obedience to do immediately concerning this matter. And many Nigerians are, are, are keen into it. Well, one of the chieftains of the Labour Party and the Delta State Labour Party governorship aspirant, that's Ken Bella, has reacted after the supporters of the Labour Party decided to read the 1999 constitution online. Now, the Labour Party took to his page. The Labour Party chieftain took to his page on some few hours ago, actually, again, uh, reacting to the call made by all supporters to participate in reading of the country's constitution. Now, according to him, according to someone or a supporter of his, he said, calling on all obedient, let's embark on transformative journey through the Nigerian constitution. Let's read the constitution here online. Now, reacting to the post, the Labour Party governorship candidate in Delta State said it was a very worthy exercise. Now, according to the post he made, he said that the supporters of Labour Party presidential aspirant Peter Gregory Obi will surely change the narrative and the trajectory of the nation. He wrote, and I quote, this is very, um, this is a very worthy ex exercise Obedient to surely change the narrative and the trajectory for this country. Obedient will do the need for now. Someone said, calling on all obedient, let's embark on transformative journey through the Nigerian constitution. Let's read the constitution together here online. I've, I have partitioned it bit by bit. Now, why was there a call for all obedient, all Nigerians to read the constitution online? You know, they said this thing about hiding the best of the information in books, knowing fully well that the youth don't have the time to read. You keep hearing things like um, the Constitution uh, in page 133, uh, subsection 2, subsection 4 of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Since you don't know what is there, <laughs> do you know how to, you may think, even if you quote the wrong thing, it's okay, yes, yes, it's a landed colleague. Yes, yes, it's a legal luminary. He must, he must may, may even be quoting off point because you don't know. He put Sandy Yogari, quote and unquote. Or better still, he may decide to pick one isolated and use it to run the race. While as that one is picking 
is a continuation of what was spoken in the previous chapter or previous page or even the previous paragraph. If you don't know the par- if you don't know what the paragraph says or what the page says, how would you know when it's actually telling you a lie or quit quoting it out of context? Because you don't know. So it's not a case of only learned colleagues should know the constitution. It's not only the lawmakers that should know the constitution. It's not only the policemen that should know the constitution. It's not only lawyers that should know the constitution. All Nigerians should have, especially those at the level of voting, those who want to vote and be voted for, should know the constitution so that if any legal luminary of any party or representing any party, quote it out of context, like what they keep saying about it. Because of this whole issue of um, uh, reclaiming mandates, Peter will be going to court. That's when we get to hear things like 25% FCT Abuja. And we begin to hear English like and or. You begin to wonder, somebody looks at and and say it's not relevant. That and is not even, it's not a continuation, it's standalone. Uh, somebody will say, no, and means that it is together. You begin to wonder, my English language, is it faulty? You go to Oxford Dictionary, you go to other dictionary. This is what I said. Oh God, what are you quoting? Why you're interested? It's probably because someone you voted for is trying to reclaim his mandate. Or someone you voted against is trying to sit on your mandate. And you're like, I want to know how this is going to be. Ah, uh, this is a, then I said, no, based on the constitution, this is how it should be. And you can the constitution. So, uh, eh, they're not using flimsy thing like and. They interpret the constitution. They're not saying that the constitution is not ambiguous. How is that because, because of the word and? Using technicality. And they're saying, look, so that we don't get fooled by technicalities, okay? Can we all not just, can we just read this constitution, know it, digest it, internalize it? So that by the time even our lawmakers making law go contrary to the law, we can always say, you have not gone right. If you want to amend the law, okay, fine. And when they amend the law, if it's not in sync with us, if the amendment of that law will suit them to have more than four years to know, or eight years to know, or maybe rule for life, or even sit in the house for life, begin to say, no, don't amend that constitution. Rather, amend this one that gives you absolute power. Because the truth is, what you don't know is mystery. And once it becomes mystery, it's more powerful. You cannot decipher it. It can ruin you. Now, if you can decipher a thing, what you know becomes simpler. You you know you can dissect it and know how to go about winning it. If if you have something you don't know what, how it works, anybody can open office, quote on your coat on quote on your coat on your head. They can begin to make you over something, you know. A typical example is what happened some time ago. I went to a state. I did not know the environment very well. And I asked, I looked, I said, okay, the best thing to do, they said, okay, when you don't know the place, just take a bike. And I thought, where I spoke, the bike man just knew I didn't know the place very well. And as, as early stages of my life. And once the bike man knew, well, I, I was not aware of uh, the area. I was new to the place. He just opened up his sharp, sharp on my head. Something that should have been maybe 100 naira. I think it was 50 naira. But what collecting more thousand five hundred office? It's power of negotiation. I didn't call him a thief. It's just that I didn't do my job very well. You know, you may say it's like what he just did, just you know, move the round, move the round, so he can justify his one thousand five hundred. And he went. But if I did my due diligence, ask questions, I used my Google map and did the necessary findings, he wouldn't probably have escaped with that amount. I just he's not just here. Or maybe that then there was no boat, there was no Uber. That's a good wrap it up. Let's meet in our conversation.